Hello, it's Marty, and welcome to part 12 of the Python and Pygame 2 Pop Ninja Turtle series. This is where we left the game last time. We have a block that we can move around on the screen. So he's moving on around all nicely, so that seems to be working all good. Now, in this video, we're going to be seeing if we can get some platforms involved. Just clean up the code here. I noticed that there's a few issues with the way we are doing things. Also, before we get started, I just want to say that this year I'm going to be taking my GED, which basically a GED is for a homeschooler, it's the equivalency of a grade 12 diploma. And I'm actually going to be taking it two years early, or actually three years earlier, because I also skipped a grade. So on the, from there, after that, I want to go on to college. Now, what do I want to do in college? I'm not really sure right now. Kind of leaning towards something in computer science, or something else in something like business. But here's the catch with the GED. In order to apply for the GED, you have to be a minimum of 18 years old, or there are special exceptions if you're 17 years old. And as you guys can probably tell, I'm only 14 years old, soon to be 15 years old in May. So I don't know exactly how it's going to go, but my plan was that after I did the GED, then I would go apply for some college courses, and I've also already applied for some scholarships, which is just, the one I've applied for is the Junior Citizen of the Year Award, which it applies only for Saskatchewan, and if you're an outstanding citizen, then you get a grand total of $3,000, which goes a long way, that buys a lot of books, that would buy you half of a pretty good college course in programming. So that was my plan, but now that I, I don't know how exactly it's going to go taking the GED early, I don't know, maybe they will make an, an exception or not. So everybody should definitely work hard. If you're smart, definitely work hard too, because you should definitely be taking advantage of the brain skills that you have. If there's any of you out there who have taken the GED before you were 17 years old, and I'd love to hear how you actually did that, because also you might be noticing that now this is all on Windows 7. Now, ever, going from Windows 10 to Windows 7, everything's going to work exactly the same way, so you don't have to worry about anything like that. Also, I want to apologize for the, the long delay in this video. Well, it's kind of a funny story now that I think about it, but it wasn't all that funny then. I was ready to do the video, and now what I did was I saw this, and I couldn't remember what Gopher Game 2 was. I'm like, whoa, I don't think I need that. So then I deleted it, yes, I actually deleted it, and then I'm like, go for game, that seems to be the one, edit with idle, and then I did the whole video based off of that, I was already to upload it, I think I was actually uploading it, well, so I realized, wait a second, there's already a part 11, so I basically redid the contents of part 11, and I was trying to upload that. Good thing I caught it before I actually uploaded it though, but, so as long as if I'm not debacling this video again, let's carry on with the series, we're just gonna right click on go for game 2, and hit edit with idle. So from there, what we're going to do is scroll down into the main function, or the main class actually, the player class I should say, what am I saying? Now right now the way we're doing it is, if upkeep, we're accelerating continually. Now the difference between accelerating and just moving is that with accelerating, I'll just pull up paint a quick second here for a good demonstration. Now acceleration is changing how fast you move. So you can go start slow and then get faster and faster. And velocity is just how constantly how fast you're moving. So right now we're basing it all on acceleration and it's gonna accelerate continually because we don't have an if statement here. So let's create an if statement. If self dot y fell whoops is less than negative five and actually negative six to give it a value of five so this way it's only going to work if we're not moving as fast as negative six and then instead of decrementing it by five let's decrement it by one now let's do this we can copy that logic control c paste that right in for right key and paste that in for left key should work all the same, except instead of y val, we're gonna have to go with x val. Just repeat that for there and there, y val, x val. There we go. Now for right key, instead of if self dot x val is greater than, we're gonna want to make sure. Let's see. If you're going to the right, you're gonna be having a positive x velocity. So we're gonna have to go if yeah. So we're gonna want to make sure it's less than, but it's gonna be a positive number. And then we're gonna want to add increment it by one every single iteration. Now if left key, we're gonna make sure it's less than. Or actually, it's greater than what we're gonna have to go with, and we're gonna go with a negative zero. Now, if we left key, we're gonna make sure our x velocity is less than, or actually, we want it to be greater than the uh, negative six because it goes negative six as you go to the right. And make sure you close off all the correct columns there to make sure that it doesn't have any glitches in the game. And from there, we just want to subtract from it one, decrement it by one every iteration. Now, if we hit save and hit F5, we should see that should all work. So you can see you can 
barely just see their guy just slightly moves to the left and right, which actually looks kind of cool, except you might be thinking that he's not actually doing anything at all. And that is because our camera, it's actually running perfectly fine. The problem is, is that we have nothing to judge on if we actually are moving or not. So let's get those platforms going. So well, the platforms are, are they're all good and happy, all ready to go. So, but all we have to do is draw them. So one thing I also just want to mention is for for loops, I typically like to use I because X is commonly used as the left and right coordinate of a sprite. So just keep it straight in my head. This is opinion, but I typically like to use X. So let's create another for loop. And basically the for loop is that you don't have to repeat this code forever. This is just going to say, hey, for however many players there are in player group, do this little line of code. That's what the whole for loop says. So let's go for I in. And now right now you might be saying, hold on a second. Didn't we already use I here? Like, isn't that going to cause a problem with the interpreter? And to that, no, it's not. And that's because the variable I only exists inside this for loop right here. So it's going to work fine. Pretty awesome feature. We can use the variable I multiple times in multiple for loops. Now, if it's for I in, I believe it was, just to check a second, platform group it was. So for I in platform group. So it's going to check around and do this for every single platform inside platform group. Then we're going to go screen dot blit, which is Pygame's say way of saying to display something out on the screen. Now we're going to want to go with i dot image because we're using i as the variable, right? This way, I mean, we could type it out for every single one, but that would take forever. And one thing can't, programmers just cannot stand, and that's repeating themselves. So on that camera, OG bay, o, obj dot apply. Open's parameters. The parameters we want to give it is i. Now if we hit that save, hit F5, we should have platforms around here, and yes we do. So you can see here that we kind of go, we kind of accelerate a little bit, which is a pretty cool effect. But you can see, we never stop, we get, unless we actually get it exactly perfectly like I did right there. So you can see, okay, there have barely stopped, okay, stopped right there, but if I move to the left, hands free, still moving to the left. Now that's not working good, so close out, we need to go back down into our platform, into our player class, and we gotta make this right. So first thing we gotta do is we gotta go if now we're now what we're testing for now is if not so we're making sure that we're not pressing the left key or the right key so then open this parameters if not left key or right key open up colon then self dot x val equals zero as what what did I just do there okay but carrying on just hit Control s to save it and then f5 to run it. now from there we can actually see okay so i'm not moving now and you can see now i've stopped moving but the up and down arrow keys they don't seem to be working right now and the reason we're not moving down is because there is no if statement to decide for moving down and if we're and the reason we're not moving up and that's because we're saying right now what we're saying is if our x velocity is less than negative six well our our x velocity is going to be greater than negative 6. So hit uh, control save, F5, and now it should be able to move up, hopefully. And yes, we can move up, but we can't quite move down yet. And that's because, again, that's going to be dealt with inside the gravity function. So let's see if we can get ourselves colliding with the platform class. So scroll up. So what we want to do is we're going to want to pass into player obj.update. We're going to want to give it another pl parameter. The parameter we want to give it is the list platform list. So platform list is the parameters. Make sure you spell all the right for now. Platform list. Not that you would ever want a typo, but right here we can. We, it has to be explicitly platform list. And then down here where we define the player class, you can name it whatever you want. So I'm gonna call this here just platforms. It's gonna be fairly simple to keep in mind that this is the platforms. Now also we're gonna need to create a collision detection function between the player and the platforms. So to do that, you just go def. And then we're gonna have to go collide open some parameters, add a colon, and hit enter. Now the parameters we want to give it is our self, so we can access everything associated with self, comma, and we're also going to want to give it platforms. Also what we're going to want to give it is we're going to need to use a copy of y val, or actually to start with x val, x val and y val. Now the reason we need to use a copy of it and not the actual self dot x val and y val, that's because, let's actually call these x val delta, because it's a it's a the changed version of Y val. Now, basically, the, why we want to do that is it's going to make more sense later on. The way the way I figured out with collision detection is you can't collide both at the same time. So we're going to have to call this class twice, and we're going to have to use a copy of our X val and Y val. So it'll make more sense as we move on a little here. 
So for us, the uh, Pygame has a very awesome feature built in, which is the collision function. So we don't have to worry about detecting for a collision. We just have to worry about what we're going to do with that data, the collision. So we're going to want to open up a for loop because we're going to want to repeat the same chunk of code for every single platform inside the platforms list. So we're going to go for i in platforms colon. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to test for a collision. So we're going to go if oops, if pi game dot collision dot and then I believe it is collide underscore correct i'll have to check up on that a second but it's not pygame.collision it's pygame.sprite because that's what we're dealing with here a pygame.sprite now open up some parameters the parameters you want to give it is who is it exactly colliding with now we're going to be colliding with a platform so we're going to, we can go self so this basically says our own detectable rect is colliding with the platforms or actually i in this case and then go colon now what's going to happen is if we are colliding with them, based on that we can go if y or x x val delta delta if I can type colon. Oh, we need to provide the test first before we add the colon. Now the test is going to be if we are greater than zero. So that means if we're moving to the right, based on that we can safely say if we're moving to the right of a block. I'll just open up MS Paint because it explains things a lot clearer than I can. So basically, let's say the square here is our player. If we're moving to the right and we do collide with a block, if we're moving to the right, we're typically probably going to be hitting the left side of the block. Based on that, we can set our position to the left side of the block. So to do that, we're going to need to go self dot rect and then dot was it uh, that left equals actually dot right it is self dot rect dot right equals and then i dot rect dot left. So that should give us collision detection with the right hand side of us and the left hand side of the block. Hit enter and now we're going to do the same thing for if we're moving to left. So if x, whoops, and of course that's why I do in my putt. I just want to change something up a quick second before I get too advanced here. And that I prefer to go instead of a little v, I would like to go with a big v. Because again, my programming style is all little case of the first word and then the first letter of the second word, big case. This here is actually just preference. You can... You can leave them small v's if you want. For me, it's just I've gotten used to doing it this way. So if you've gotten used to doing it the other way, feel free to do it that way as well. Now we want to go if x whoop, val delta. Now this is kind of a long variable, but it's not terribly long. It's greater or is less than zero. Colon. Then we're going. I'm just going to scroll down so we can actually see what we're doing here. Self dot rect dot whoop, dot left. So we're going to, if we're moving to the left, we're going to be dealing with the left hand side of our square equals i dot, well, not t, i dot rect and then dot right. Enter. Then we're going to go if y val delta is greater than zero. So that means if we're moving, what would that be? If we're moving down, so if we're moving down, colon, then we're going to go self dot rect dot bottom we're going to deal with bottom because if we're moving down we're going to be colliding with the bottom of ourselves and the top of the block self so dot rect dot bottom equals i dot rect dot top now we can copy all that control c and then we can just paste that right below it Whoop, right there and instead of a, gr a greater than sign a less than sign and then instead of self dot rect dot bottom self dot rect dot top and i dot rect dot bottom because if we're moving up we're gonna be colliding with the top of ourselves and the bottom of of the block now this here actually looks all solid to me so if you just hit control save take out the unnecessary lines especially if you have a good code checker it's important to make the code look really nice one more thing i should do a second here is i'm just going to scroll up into the main function and we're just going to create a couple more platforms here to see if we can actually collide because we haven't got up and down moving yet so might be kind of difficult to collide without that so and also before that let's set our position lower a little bit so right here in player obj dot and then player obj equals player class last parameter you can replace that we'll go how does 100 pixels down sound control s to save and hit f5 so now if we move over to the right uh it doesn't seem to be working uh now i see what the problem is so scroll down into our main funk or actually into our player class once more now, we've created this collide function, but we're not doing anything with it. So we want to do something with like that. So what we want to do is, let's see, after, I think, I believe, believe it is, but after we move, then we want to collide with X. So after we move X, we want to collide with X. So self, 
oops, we gotta use the self, self dot collide, and then opens the premise. The premise you want to give it, whoops, make sure to take out the extra out. The premise you want to give it is, well, it's automatically going to give itself self. So we're going to deal, if we're dealing with the X file, we're going to go X file, come, and then we also want to give it the platform, so, and then just platforms. Now, the, we, now you can copy that line of code because we cannot deal with the X and Y collision at the same time. So, so we have to call the collision detection function twice. So just paste it below with the uh, self.rec.top plus equals self.y file. And then instead of X file, whoops, but we gave it three parameters here. So it, we can also give it another parameter of zero. So that should take care of it. Now we're going to go zero and then whoop, comma. And instead of X, go with Y. So control save. And now we should theoretically have collision detection which no we do not. Before we interpret it and run it, make sure it's self.x file, and not just x file, because it has no idea what you're talking about if you tell it that expecting this some random y file. It's gotta be self, saying it's a part of itself. Control S to save, and hit F5. Now we should be able to run, and yes, we do collide, and then we crash. Oh, slight little typo there. Self x file data is, yeah, that's probably, don't know what the, I don't know what it's talking about either, so it's probably a little typo though. Replace that with an L, control save, and hit F5 to run it. Now we should finally hit the side of it, and no, Y Vel Delta is not fine. That's right. Again, right here, it's Y V with a capital V. Forgot to replace those. So that should do it. Control save, hit F5. Now if we finally hit it, yes, so it works. We hit the side of it, and we stop moving. So that works all good. Now before we go, I just want to get it so you have somewhat more of a working game, so you can show all your friends and impress them. So we're going to go here. Uh, if create another if statement if down and then you can actually just copy and paste the line paste the contents of the if statement for up key and you just paste it all into down key and it should do it except then you're just gonna have to go replace that with a greater than sign replace that with a take out the negative take out the negative and plus equals one. and also if we're not moving left or right we can just copy this these lines of code here control C enter a new line paste them all right on in there then if not, instead of left key or right key, it's up, whoop, key, up key. So if not up key or down key is what we're dealing with here. Backspace, down key. Then we're going to go self.yval equals zero. So now we should be able to move up, down, left, and right. All good. Control save, F5. So now we can move up, we can move down, but we don't seem to be stopping. Now what seems to be a problem here? Close out. Oh, that makes sense. We're setting X file equal to... We're, we're setting x well equal I don't know what that means so we're gonna it's a y val control save and hit f5 so now move up stop move down stop perfect so let's just check and make sure we have collision detection on all sides of it and yes just want to make sure it's on all good yes works 100 all good so there we go so from here you could really take the development of this into your own hands based on this you could turn it into an rpg like top down kind of zelda sort of game or you could continue on with the series and keep working on a two platform now if any of you guys are interested in a top down rpg game kind of like the legend of zelda just let me know in the comment section and i'll see what i can do about making it but i'll probably be doing it with c plus plus simply because python's not the best game programming language that there is and i feel that the python language is it's covered really good there's a ton of tutorials out there on youtube already anyway next video we're gonna get a gravity function going and hopefully if we have time for it, some basic animations to our player as well so thank you for watching and subscribing and thank you for putting up with the delay because of the goof up which yeah and I'll be seeing you next Monday. It's your Marty Oak.